Welcome back to this video series on optical remote sensing as a part of the subject Advanced Remote Sensing and GIS at the Australian National University. I'm David Summers and this next video is on spectral response. I showed this slide in an earlier video to demonstrate how um, multispectral sensors uh, record um, electromagnetic radiation in discrete bands. But also mentioned that the uh, obviously that that information exists over the continuum that is um, the electromagnetic spectrum, and so information is being reflected back off uh, surfaces at a whole range of wavelengths, not just in the discrete bands that we record. And so, in this in this video, we're going to talk about these whole spectra and how they are unique to different materials and what makes those materials reflect back this unique um, spectrum. So the most, um, perhaps the most useful and, and one of the most characteristic spectra of materials on the Earth's surface is that of vegetation. Uh, vegetation has this particularly unique red edge that is demonstrated as a, a very high reflectance at the um, beginning of the near-infrared after quite a low reflectance in the red. There's also uh, a low reflectance in the blue with a characteristic high bump around the green and this is what makes um, vegetation appear green to us as the visible light. This absorption of visible light in the blue and the red and the reflectance in the green is actually the result of uh, photosynthesis. So the plant is using the, the energy from the radiation at the wavelengths for blue and red light uh, to carry out photosynthesis. The plant is reflecting all the radiation in the near infrared due to the uh, due to cell walls and plant structure. There's a couple of small absorption features over the near infrared because uh, water, which is which healthy vegetation is full of, absorb um, at those absorb near infrared radiation at those wavelengths. There's also a couple of large water absorption features further into the short wave infrared. The short wave infrared is dominated by those um, uh, water absorption features, but there's also some expression of uh, cellulose and lignin, lignin and starch. But in a healthy plant, those those large water um, absorption features in the short wave infrared mask those, those other features. So as I said, this spectra is characteristic of, of healthy uh, vegetation and really in a, in, it's unmistakable as a, as a vegetation spectra. So I mentioned that um, vegetation has a very characteristic uh, spectra. It's also got a very... Um, there's not a lot of variation in vegetation spectra. So here we have uh, vegetation spectra for three different types of plants um, green grass, uh, conifer and a um, deciduous uh, tree uh, and you can see there's, there's some variation between each of them but they all have that same characteristic um, that same characteristic shape uh, and similar features at pretty much all across the, across the whole uh, electromagnetic spectrum and, and so this is what this is a, uh, quite a useful thing, and the vegetation is very easy to identify in imagery. But it also means that it's not always very easy to distinguish between two different types of vegetation based on their, their spectrum alone. It's not impossible, but the similarity between the spectra, despite the uh, great differences between the plants that they're um, taken from. Uh, gives you an indication of that, that how, diff how difficult it is to distinguish between these, these, uh, these different plants. However, while green vegetation has a very characteristic spectra, uh, it's very different from the spectra of a uh, dry plant. So a dry plant completely... So, so here we have a, the green line is the, obviously the, the typical green uh, healthy plant spectra and the red line is a typical dry plant spectra. Uh, obviously there's no photosynthesis happening, uh, so the plant has completely lost this um, characteristic uh, green hump uh, in the visible. It's also completely lost the um, characteristic red edge at the um, 
between the red and the near infrared. Uh, it's also lost the uh, water absorption features in the near infrared because the plant started to dry out. There's, there's less water in the plant to absorb that um, at those wavelengths. The large water absorption features in the short wave infrared are also much smaller. Uh, and as a result, it's much easier to pick up the distinctive uh, absorption features caused by cellulose, sugar and starch and lignin in the short wave infrared. And these can be quite useful in distinguishing between uh, other materials that have a similar spectra to dry plants uh, because th th those particular absorption features are quite unique to dry plants. The difference between, obviously the difference between uh, green vegetation here and dry uh, vegetation makes it quite easy to distinguish between these two uh, land covers in remote sensing imagery. So here are some examples of soil spectra, another um, material that's commonly encountered in remote sensing. You can see that they all have a reasonably similar uh, spec uh, spectral response but with some characteristic differences. So the the dark red loam at the top there, the red line, it has a characteristic absorption feature at around 800 due to absorption by um, iron oxide in the soil, uh, whereas the other, all the other three um, spectra don't uh, don't have that characteristic hump at all. You notice that all of the spectra have this uh, ab water absorption features, both at uh, 1400 and 1900 nanometers. Uh, this is characteristic of most soils, unless they're really quite dried out. You can also see that there's some variability between these different spectra of the uh, uh, what's called the clay absorption feature, which occurs at 2.2 micrometers. This spectra, uh, this absorption feature, is due to hydroxyl groups in the uh, in the clay molecules, and so typically soils with a larger clay content will have a larger absorption feature at this point. And also, depending on the um, particular clay, you will get what's called a double absorption feature or a single absorption feature. So again, with this dark uh, yellow loam, you can see it's a slightly asymmetrical, um, this absorption feature has a slightly asymmetrical shape, which uh, distinguishes it from some of these others. And that can be an indication of the mineral makeup of the clay in that particular soil. This can be particularly useful to distinguish, for example, uh, the behaviour of different soils and also to distinguish the, um, the clay content or whether they're a particularly sandy soil. So for example, the dark brown fine sandy loam has almost no clay absorption feature at all. And in fact, it has a very low, uh, very small water absorption features, particularly at the um, 1400, at 1 1.4 micrometres. So these features can be quite useful in determining the properties of the soil, uh, the, the water content and also the mineral content of soil. One of the limitations of soil spectra is that they're often particularly obscured by vegetation in the landscape. There are a few environments where uh, soil is exposed to the sensor so that you can actually detect, directly detect information about the soil. Soil spectra and dry vegetation spectra also have uh, remarkably similar, similar uh, reflectance uh, across most of the um, optical range. This, uh, there's a couple of uh, exceptions to this, so the um, dry vegetation do not have the clay absorption features um, at uh, 2200. Um, or, or on this scale, it's one point. It's 2.2 micrometers, uh, and also soils do not have the characteristic uh, cellulose uh, absorption features that dry plants do. Also, as an example, here are a few um, synthetic spectra. So we have red brick, galvanized iron, terracotta tiles, and asphalt. Uh, these examples are obviously um, a lot more useful in urban environments, although they can be applied uh, in rural environments, looking for sheds or roads, um, isolating roofs, these things can be useful. Um, but obviously there's a vast array of synthetic um, materials with different properties, and so for any given application you would need to understand 
the properties of the material that you're interested in. I won't go into those in detail. Um, so this has been um, a brief look at uh, the different types of spectra and the different spectral response of uh, materials uh, to uh, radiation. Um, I hope that's given you some insight into, into how these um, different phenomena interact and some understanding of some of the key concepts or, or key characteristics of um, different materials in the landscape. So that's it for spectral response and, uh, and in the next uh, video we'll talk about um, image interpretation.